Say you're just starting out at the drums and you know you have a lot to master, but you muster some courage and you do a gig or post some clips online. Getting negative comments about your drumming hits differently when you're first learning to play. Here are a couple of my favorites that I've gotten over the years. No disrespect, but um, yours was the worst. By worst, I mean least best. Sorry mate, your version sucked the worst. Watching you play was like watching a reanimated corpse. I know the music you play sucks, but for the sake of your audience, at least try to look like you're having fun. Now, it's hard enough for me to deal with this stuff and not let it ruin my day, but imagine you just started out as a player. Just emerging from the nest, spreading your delicate wings to take flight the first time and... Well, fear not, because today we're going to talk about one of the biggest hurdles to developing players putting themselves out there. Negative feedback, and something I call the gaslight hangover. Uh. When you don't know where to draw the line between what's them and what's you, and you start getting all up in your head thinking, maybe they're right. After all, I should be open-minded and... <laughs> Stop it. We'll talk about it today. First, I'm going to tell you about how I deal with it. Then we'll talk about what the gaslight hangover is, and why it can be so crushing for beginners and intermediates. Finally, I'll share the best ways to deal with it. In real life. Because this isn't 10 second solution stuff. But if you stick around, you'll understand better what's going on, and how to feel better when you take those fledgling steps to play drums in public. Roll that channel game. Before we talk about you, let's talk about me. I mentioned earlier that only recently I've reached a phase in my playing where I'm no longer afraid to be myself in public. It wasn't until I started writing this video that I realized what that was. It's not that I think I'm so great or at the end of my musical journey or something. No, it's more like Eminem at the end of 8 Mile, where they're not going to come up with something I haven't thought about myself. Here, tell these people something they don't know about me. You can't kill a soul that's already cold and dark. Ooh, that sounded like a gent lyric. Or something that Greyjoys would say. What is dead may never die. There's another far more optimistic side to it. But before we get there, can we do something? It's something I've waited for years to do, and I just haven't had the right video to do it. But it will help clarify things. Trust me. Trust me. Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? Because nobody's told you to fuck off in 30 years and you're clearly not afraid of lawsuits or jail? Were you rushing or were you dragging? Tell you what would save both of us some time is if you just let me know what you want. I mean, until the cops get here. You guys in the band, I'm gonna give you some life advice. Grab your phones and start filming because this is gonna go viral. Start counting. You guys are filming this now, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So you do know the difference! If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will fuck you like a pig. Hang on, did you just slap me? Wow, just, just wow. You, you must hate your kid's college fund. Can you guys tag me in that footage? You'll be hearing from my attorney. And yeah, I know I don't have an attorney. Anyway, I'm out. I recommend not trying to stop me. Best case scenario for you is I act like Gandhi, get the whole thing on tape and sue you into the Stone Age. Best case scenario. Luckily for you, I'm not a confrontational guy. Mm, that wasn't quite as much fun as I'd hoped. Because anybody who wasn't gaslit wouldn't have lasted past the first rehearsal. So all the rest of the movie... I can still fucking see you, Mini-Me! Okay, now is not the time. If you want the fucking part, earn it. Is that really the fastest you can play? Wouldn't have happened, probably. But still, I had fun. But now, let's talk about you. When you first start to play the drums, the most frustrating thing is you don't know what you don't know. Let's use one of my favorite analogies, the top of a mountain. It's not perfect because in drums there is no summit, but work with me here. Anyway, say you're a year into playing the drums, you're all the way back at base camp. And you can see the summit. After all, there are rampant videos of our drum heroes. And you can see it's way above you. But how far above? It's all kind of an abstraction. And what exactly lies between where you are and the summit? You can guess, but it's just a guess. To translate this to the drums, it's like, how good do my double strokes have to be? And more fundamentally, is this good? Or is there some way I'm not even aware of in which it's bad? And it's into that fragile psychology that negative comments and life events fall. To illustrate how this can manifest itself, a story. I knew a guy who was fired from a gig. I mean, I've been fired from gigs myself, but maybe everyone's gonna be like, oh, end of one, end of one. So I'm gonna tell this guy's story. A producer told his bandmates that they should get rid of him because long list of issues. So they did. And this guy was left like, what? So let's talk about the gaslight hangover. 
My friend had the gaslight hangover because, I'll tell you this now, the producer and band leader were almost for sure assholes. A big part of him getting fired was their own insecurities. I've heard him play and this gig wasn't over his head. So why the hangover part? Why not just make like new Andrew Neiman and tell them to fuck off? Were you rushing or were you dragging? Look, I want to make this gig work, but maybe this is a better fit for another player. It would be a lot easier if you just told me what you want, but since you want to play pop quiz, I'll just try to read your mind. Let me give this one more try and if it's not a fit, give Johnny Utah a shot. Because my friend knows there are things he needs to work on. What if that's all the producer was on about? Besides, we're constantly told to be open-minded to criticism. So shouldn't my student entertain the possibility the band leader was right? That's why it's such a hangover. There's almost certainly a component of this guy's an asshole. But maybe he's right about some stuff. And if he's right about some, how do I know it's not 100% me? And that's the stuff that keeps us up at night. It's even worse if it's online and anonymous. I wanted to say anecdote the second, which would sound super neat after anecdote the first, but this isn't exactly an anecdote. But work with me here. Here's a comment I got on the very video that marked my apparently graduating from caring about this stuff. I don't know how to be nice. You are barely average and should stop noodling. Definitely work on rudiments more. You are not good at all. You have no musicality in your playing at all. Hopefully I was able to find a super good voice actor to do that in a really convincing French accent. I'm happy to say I do not care anymore about such comments. When it comes to the drums, it gets better you guys. More on that later. But say you're midway up the mountain. And right now let's define the summit not as ultimate drummer but as no gaps left in your self-esteem for negative comments to hide so you're mostly immune. One, two, three, four, two. So you do know the difference! Hang on, did you just slap me? Wow, just, just wow. You, you must hate your kid's college fund. But say you're partway up that mountain and you're wondering, is this good? And you get a comment like that. Part of your mind goes back to a scene from a super obscure Tom Selleck movie called Mr. Baseball. What's that scene with Kikarna? You have a hole in your swing, he says. What if he's right and everyone sees it but me? And because you're still developing, there are lots of places in your brain for that doubt to camp out. The gaslight hangover. But it gets better. I had a student on a call this past winter ask, is it always going to feel like I'm chasing a receding goal line? Does I constantly revise what it means to be a good player up and still feel like I'm never measuring up? No, it's not. Eventually you'll get to a place where the fog clears and you can see better players and kind of imagine what they're doing. And you know it's just time plus desire for you to get there. Or maybe they're once in a generation talent and they're always going to be a step ahead, but you're strangely at peace with that. To use the language analogy, you speak the language now. And even if you're not the fastest or fanciest speaker, you know most of the nooks and crannies where language talent lives. Nobody's going to surprise you with like a hidden level of English or something. Well, almost nobody. And truth be told, there are probably still a couple of people who could level me with a, nah, that's not it. But it's very few. And Terrence Fletcher sure isn't one of them. And the great thing about that vantage point is you see gaslighting in 100% relief. Anybody talking any shit, you can see exactly how right or wrong they are. Uh -uh, you can't tell me nothing. But wait, isn't that closed-mindedness? No, because you're still open to feedback and improvement. But nobody's gonna surprise you with some super secret way everyone can see you're bad except you. Okay, but what to do in the interim? Because that's where the gaslight hangover can be the worst. Well, you probably think I'm gonna say don't ever expose yourself to comments. But you don't want to do that. I'm guessing drums took a big jump between when you couldn't easily see world-class drummers you've never heard of on their smartphone, and when you could. I'm also guessing there's a big difference between players who came up in a hard knocks context, like a church or New York jam session, and somebody who's only played for their extremely loving parents who are automatically going to tell you everything you do is amazing. Which kind of makes it like food. No matter how troubled your relationship with it, you can't go cold turkey. But here are two strategies. First, get people you trust in your corner. For drums, there are at least 20 people I know who, if I were to ask them, was this whack, they would know and they would tell me their opinion. For business stuff, I have a great sometime coach who will give me the truth unvarnished. Which is super useful because in business, there's a lot of gaslighting. Fake comment read aloud. 80-20 drummer is never going to work. Your audience is way too narrow. You think you're going to build an audience from people who listened to JD back in Nate Smith? You should be trying to be everything to everybody. Have you heard of a site called drumio.com? Check them out, dog. You'll get an idea what it takes to really bring it in the drum space. Anyway, with these trusted consigliaries who aren't afraid to give you the truth, get in front of them before you get in front of a general audience as much as you can. Because they'll help you calibrate your own radar. If you're getting a comment that lines up with their assessment, you know to take it more seriously. And speaking of calibrating your radar, another way to do that is with my brand new 3 video mini course. It'll give you a fresh look at your own playing and a few ways you haven't thought of to start viewing your playing more realistically. So you can accelerate your improvement. It's almost 45 minutes of exclusive instruction I don't share on YouTube. 
And did I mention it's free? Just click the link below the player to get started. Will I sleep at night hawking my products in a video about gaslighting? Yes, I will. Anyway, we're talking coping strategies. Coping strategy number two. Realize that somebody can be right and simultaneously an asshole. Maybe a commenter brings up a valid point. Like the driver who was tailgating me while honking loudly the other day. I was driving rather slowly looking for a parking space before I had time to pull off the road. That doesn't mean he wasn't also an asshole. Free yourself from wondering whether you deserve the assholery. It's got a lot of questions, buddy, and I don't know you, so I'm going to take it as a sign of disrespect. And I think you should watch it, you step. While staying open to the substance of the comment. If your tribe of mentors agrees, that is. Sorry, Tim. Fair use, maybe? Don't sue me. Finally, I'm going to tell you some things you're going to be tempted to disregard. But disregard them at your own risk. When it comes to responding to negativity, it's always better not to engage. Online, at least. When you respond, you show the commenter you spent time and energy to give him attention. You show him he can get to you. As I said, not always going to work in the real world, but at least that's the ideal. And in real life... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you do know the difference! Anyway, it's much rarer that people are so explicit with their comments in real life. So, did we learn anything today? It's tough to be learning a skill because there's legitimate room for improvement, which makes it difficult to tell how much to listen to negative comments because you don't know when the other person ends and you begin. It gets better as you get better and better able to survey the territory. But also, in the meantime, try these strategies. Build a network of people you trust to tell you the truth. So you don't have to wonder if you need to listen to the gaslighters. And consider that they could have a partial point, but still be an asshole. Absolve yourself of needing to be completely right to observe that somebody else is the asshole. Take a walk. How about you take a fucking walk, take the fetish and you shove it up your fucking ass. Get the fuck out of here. Hope these helped you. Got a gaslight story of your own? Leave it in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want to support the channel, do it by supporting yourself. Get the free three video mini course by clicking below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys soon. It's been real. I always enjoy doing these. See you in the future.